The wipers on the bus go swish, swish, swish. It might be something you'd call controlled chaos in the toddler room at Children's Castle Early Learning Center in Roanoke. I'm about to give you a new paper. Give me a second, okay? But it's nothing compared to the pandemonium Gina Williams experienced during the pandemic. I don't think that I have ever seriously thought about giving up my career and choosing a different profession more so than I thought of it then. She's owned and run the center for 18 years. And despite the cannonballs COVID has thrown her way, the Children's Castle never raised the white flag. I'm glad that I stuck it out because um, when, when you ride the waves, eventually the ocean will calm. Um, and it, it does seem to be calming now. That said, it's still not exactly smooth sailing in the child care industry. The number one thing that we hate saying is, I'm sorry, we don't have a position. It's something Williams has gotten used to saying as parent after parent has requested a spot for their child, even those whose children haven't been born yet. And our waiting list um, right now, I think, is out through the first of the year currently. Hers is not the only center that can't meet demand. I would say we're at, we're at a critical point. Denise Ellis is the director of early learning strategies for the United Way of Roanoke Valley. She says regionally and even statewide, childcare is not widely accessible. You know, childcare and available quality childcare is the backbone of our economy. I think that it has a negatively affected industry because there are available jobs, but there's not enough available childcare for those families to enable them to work. The Virginia Early Childhood Foundation estimates more than $66 million in business revenue in the Southwest region has been lost because of inadequate child care. But it's not for lack of trying. In the past year, Williams has spent over $14,000 just to advertise open positions. That is the most I have spent on advertising combined in the 18 years that I have been open. People are responding to those ads and offers are being made, but William says some just never show up for work. Come to find out, a lot of it is a requirement to continue their unemployment. They have to actively search for jobs. Centers must maintain a certain teacher to child ratio. So unfilled teaching positions mean fewer spots available. Even ones the state is willing to pay for with the average cost to a family per week ranging from 125 to $200. So there are some financial um, resources available to families, but finding places to put the children that are eligible um, has been where the challenge is. <laughs> Williams worries that children who miss out on an early education could be missing out on a lot. She says children who can't get into programs won't be monitored for important developmental milestones. Not being able to get into programs like this prevents parents from even being aware that that support is even out there to help them with their children. The Virginia Early Childhood Foundation estimates the Ready Region West could use about 2,000 more slots to meet the need. The foundation, working with the state and other agencies, has mobilized people like Ellis to improve their respective region's access and quality. That means giving feedback to providers, supporting them with resources, and getting them on board with a new evaluation tool that will make their quality assessments public. In the meantime, William says she and others are committed to holding down the fort. And Ellis is hopeful the state continues to put an emphasis on our youngest learners and the people who teach them. They're taking care of our most fragile, um, you know, most vulnerable humans. In Roanoke, Leanna Scacchetti, WDBJ7.